Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna teach you how to increase the life of your cables and hoses in a dynamic cable carrier. And here to help us out is Dave Smith. He's with Subaki Cobble Schlepp. Dave, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, doing good. Got lots of stuff on the table right here. What are we gonna to learn today from you, yeah, Dave? Yeah, today we're gonna to be discussing what steps we can take to improve the life of our cables and hoses operating inside of a dynamic cable carrier. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, I brought a couple samples to help illustrate my points. I like it. Well, where do you wanna start on the table here? Well, first we need to ensure that the cable and hoses have been properly selected for this type of cable application. We often find that customers mistakenly install a static style electrical cable or hose inside their cable carrier, not realizing that they need to use a continuous flex cable or hose for this type of constant motion. And we can assume you use the wrong type of cables and hoses, you end up with what? Lost downtime, production, it's just, it's a mess. It's gonna cost you money in the long run, right? Correct. Not only do you have to make sure that you select the correct style of cable and hoses, but we also need to ensure that we've properly sized the carrier and then installed the cable and hoses correctly. Mm -hmm. If we do those things, we can be assured that our cable and hose fit system will not fail prematurely. Okay, and what are we going to look at first? First, let's take a look at this carrier. This is very similar to how we find cables and hoses often installed in a cable track out in the field. Mm -hmm. By pointing out the issues with this system, we can easily illustrate how a customer can improve the performance of their own systems. Oh, okay. Well, what's the first issue with that where I'm looking at here? It looks okay to me. This carrier system is overfilled. Oh. Uh, electrical cables, for example, need to have a minimum of 10% free space when okay. operating inside of a cable carrier and hoses need to have a minimum of 20% free space when operating inside of a cable carrier. When you add up the outside diameter of all the cables and hoses, we really don't want the carrier to be more than 60% filled. I'm thinking that's a cable Twinkie then, because <laughs> that is definitely <laughs> stuff. Yes, abso um, absolutely, okay. it's, it's, it's way overfilled, and that's not uncommon from what we see out in the field. Okay. Well, is that gonna fix everything if we just loosen it up, or are there other no, issues? No, no, it'll help, but there's some other issues. Another issue is the lack of dividers. Uh, we have vertical dividers, and what they do is they keep the hoses, cables and hoses from wrapping around each other and tangling. Okay, and is, they, that, is that what we're, we're seeing right here? Absolutely. Okay. And then they also maintain that the cable ha keeps its uh, correct amount of free space. Okay. And that's what you can see here. We've taken the exact same cable package now. We've, uh, we've given the proper amount of spacing for the electrical cables and the hoses, mm -hmm. and we installed the vertical dividers to maintain that proper layout. That seems like that would be it. No, the other thing we need to do is we need to use strain relief to fasten the cable and hoses in place. Okay, that's what this is right here. That's what that is right there. Okay, now what, what does strain relief actually do? Well, when a cable carrier cycles and moves back and forth, it'll either want to pull more cable into the carrier or push cable out of the carrier. So the strain relief makes sure that we maintain the correct amount of cable and hose inside the cable carrier. Oh, okay. Uh, you can so often tell. Like, that's you like on the back that we have right here. David. It's got it all tied in place. Okay. And then you can tell if this issue is taking place by the scuff marks like you ha see here. You get from rubbing back and forth across the crossbars. I was wondering if that was an issue or not. Now, is that the only reason that you're going to get scuff marks like that? No. Even with the steps we've taken up to this point, you're still going to have some relative motion between your cables and your uh, cable carrier crossbar. Okay. That's one of the reasons why Cobble Shop manufactures the various types of crossbars like we see here. With Cobble Shop having all the various crossbar options, we can ensure that we select a crossbar that's friendly with the jacket material of our cables and hoses. Oh, okay. Well, um, give me an example because I see some different ones there. Um, well, what's yeah. this one made out of right Yeah, here? that's our aluminum crossbar. And the aluminum crossbar, for example, is much friendlier to the jacket material of our PVC jackets like we have here, as opposed to the nylon crossbars. I was gonna say, it looks a lot smoother. It so. is, and that's exactly it. It's a, a smooth material, so you're not gonna get the abrasion like you see here on your cables and hoses. Okay, a anything else we should be looking for to make everything run great? Well, the final thing is we need to ensure that we've got the correct bend radius on All our right. cable carrier. Um, we want to ensure that the bend radius is larger than the minimum bend radius of our cables and hoses. So we're talking here, how? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So how do we yep. do? How do we know? How do we? How do we do that? Well, Aside from me, like just. <laughs> Well, the easiest way is to look at the data sheets. Get, uh, if we have access to the data sheets of our cable and hoses, we can look up and they'll list what the minimum bend radius is for the cable and hoses operating inside of a cable carrier. At that point in time, we just want to make sure that the cable carrier we selected has a larger, larger bend radius than what's specified on the data sheets for the cables and hoses. What if I don't have access to the cable and data sheet? That's not uncommon. That's actually pretty common there. Then we just take a look at the largest cable or hose inside of our cable carrier and we measure its outside diameter. Right. For electrical cables rated for a constant motion inside of a cable carrier, they generally have a minimum bend radius of seven and a half times its outside diameter. All right. Hoses have a minimum bend radius of 12 times its outside diameter. With that said, I know these numbers can be easily forgotten, 
So we have a technical handbook on our website that can be downloaded from www.collegeslap.com that lists all these numbers in a real easy format. Well, Dave, thanks so much. Okay. We appreciate the time here. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great information right there. And if you need more information on this, don't forget to contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. And remember, when you're doing this kind of stuff, always wear your PPE. It's always important, whatever the job. And uh, hopefully this will help your practical application. Thanks so much for watching today's how-to video. You can look for more how-to videos from Motion Industries with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.